So first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to participate in the, this debate and focus on the role of chemoradiotherapy and locally advanced DH junction uh, cancer. So these are my uh, disclosures. I think it's important to stress that the classification of G junction uh, adenocarcinoma is based on anatomical cr criteria, in, in uh, particular the relation of the tumor center uh, relative to the anatomical cardia, dividing the G junction tumors in type 1, type 2, and type 3. If you look at the treatment algorithm for resectable esophageal cancer, a focus on the G-junction uh, uh, tumors, there are indeed two uh, approaches that can be followed, period of perioperative chemotherapy and preoperative uh, chemoradiotherapy. And it's interesting that at the uh, multidisciplinary uh, um, expert panel discussion at St. Gallen last year, there was a vote on the preferred treatment in the different uh, subtypes of EG-junction tumors. And you can see that for type 3 uh, EG junction tumors, there was quite some consensus, consensus on the role of uh, perioperative chemotherapy, while for the um, uh, distal esophageal uh, type 1, seaward type 1 uh, tumors, there was a strong um, uh, preference for neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy. And you can also see for the type 2, there was uh, um, um, a division between the two approaches. So I'd like to um, ask three different questions in relation uh, during this debate. The first one is, are G-junction tumors uh, a separate disease entity that should be treated uniformly? And we know from the um, molecular characterization by the uh, TCGA network that if you move down the uh, esophagus towards the uh, G-junction, that there is a uh, clear enrichment of the chromosomal uh, instable subtype. But if you move further uh, towards the cardia and beyond the cardia, then you see that uh, the tumors uh, take a more gastric-like uh, subtype. And this was also confirmed by um, a study that looked at uh, messenger RNA and microRNA expression uh, in the cardia uh, subtype of G-junction tumors showing that the uh, geojunction tumors, cardia, so type 2, type 3, uh, are more similar to gastric than to esophageal cancer. So there seems to be a um, division between the different subtypes. And of, also if you look at other factors uh, such as uh, uh, the intestinal metaplasia, biologi biological behavior, and the predominant lymphatic spread, there seems to be a distinction um, between type 1 uh, on the one hand, and the type 2 and type 3 on the other hand, which may pose a question whether these, this, these different um, uh, subtypes uh, may require a different therapeutic approach. Now, the problem with the studies that have been done so far, you can see an overview on this slide of the most important recent uh, studies, is that the patients with a G-junction tumors um, vary uh, significantly between uh, 17 and 100 percent, and in most of the studies uh, constitute only a minority of the study population. So it's very difficult to um, uh, draw any firm conclusions on this specific subtype of patients based on these studies. There is, however, one study that included uh, um, only geojunction tumors. That's a study, uh, the POET study by uh, Stahl, and I'd like to spend uh, a few more minutes on this particular trial, again because um, uh, all patients had a CWIRT 1 uh, or 2. There were no patients with CWIRT 3 in this study. So this trial, as you know, randomized patients between neoadjuvant chemotherapy, cisplatin 5 of you, um, versus neo neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy uh, with a relative low dose of 30 gray. If you look at the um, uh, pathological complete remission rate, you can see that there were significantly more patients that reached a PCR in the neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy arm as compared to the uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy uh, arm. Also in terms of R1 resections, that was lower in the chemoradiotherapy arm compared to the uh, chemotherapy arm. 
uh, and uh, also in terms of local regional uh, relapse rates, which was significantly lower in the uh, neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy arm as opposed to the neoadjuvant chemother uh, chemotherapy arm. This uh, study uh, did not uh, reach its primary uh, endpoint, uh, mainly because of uh, premature closure due to uh, uh, slow accrual. But, if, if you can, but you can see that in terms of three-year and five-year overall survival, there was a um, nearly uh, statistical significant difference in favor of the neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy arm. But again, um, uh, formally not statistically significant. In terms of freedom from local tumor progression, there was a significant benefit of uh, the uh, pre-op chemoradiotherapy arm, which was both for the CWR type 1 and CWR type 2, the case, especially for the CWR type 2. And these, study, these results were confirmed in a recent systematic review and meta-analysis, where you see close to significant um, uh, favorable role of pre-op chemoradiotherapy and a significant effect of pre-op chemoradiotherapy in terms of disease-free survival. But again, there was only one randomized study with purely G-adjunction tumors. The rest were uh, smaller subsets or uh, non-randomized uh, phase three trials. So the second question uh, I'd like to ask is how, are effect how effective are preoperative regimens in inducing tumor response? And again, I show you an uh, overview of uh, trials that re did report on the PCR rate, the ERTC uh, 41954 trial, the CROSS trial, the NEO REST trial, and the POA trial. And you can clearly see that the PCR rate um, is, is uh, clearly higher in the neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy arm uh, compared to the neoadjuvant uh, chemother uh, chemotherapy arm. And also in the systematic review I just showed you, uh, the odds ratio of a PCR was 2.8 in favor of chemoradiotherapy. And why is it important? It's important because if you look at, for example, the CROSS trial, uh, uh, of course it was a, a, a trial in uh, esophageal cancer with a small subset of uh, G-adjunction tumors, that a significant proportion of patients did reach a PCR, around 30%. And the question is whether in these patients surgery is uh, even necessary. So there are several trials ongoing that specifically look at that question. One example is the SANO trial in the Netherlands. Uh, patients are included to receive the cross regimen and are then clinically um, uh, evaluated um, repeatedly by endoscopy, uh, bite on bite biopsies, EUS. Um, and if there is an ongoing clinical complete response, then patients are finally allocated to undergo surgery or to undergo active surveillance. The final question I'd like to ask is, uh, is preoperative treatment associated with better patient compliance? And that subject has already been touched upon in the previous two uh, uh, presentations. So this slide summarizes on the left uh, recent or ongoing trials with a post or perioperative treatment arm and on the right, studies that uh, have only looked at preoperative treatment arms. So as you can see on the left, that the percentage of patients that were able to complete full treatment, so including the pre-op and post-operative phase, um, is rather low. And only in studies from Asia, this percentage is, um, uh, is higher. But we should, of course, realize that that's a totally different patient population. So patient compliance in the post-operative phase um, um, is, is, is very low. If you look on the right um, uh, to the studies that only include preoperative treatment, there you can see that the completed uh, uh, percentage is much higher. And that argues, um, um, I think, to a shift from a, a post-operative to uh, a preoperative strategy. So to summarize, the adjunction adenocarcinoma represents uh, different subtypes, and these may indeed require differential uh, therapeutic approaches. Location, pathogenesis, uh, and biological behavior discriminate uh, uh, type 1 from type 2 and 3. Type 1 G-adjunction tumors are considered uh, uh, distal esophageal uh, tumors and should be treated accordingly, either preoperative chemoradiotherapy or preoperative chemotherapy. 
with the remark that preoptive chemo radiotherapy uh, may be a little bit more effective and also opens the opportunity to um, um, continue in an uh, organ preservation uh, program. We've seen that preoperative chemoradiotherapy is associated with high PCR rates and that may be indeed exploited in the wait and see protocols. Now, true adenocarcinomas of the GI junction, so type 2 and cardiac uh, tumors type 3, um, uh, should be treated like gastric cancer. And uh, indeed, the standard treatment, uh, at least in Europe, is perioperative chemotherapy. And in certain cases, and we discussed it uh, previously, uh, postoperative chemoradiotherapy uh, could be considered. Again, mentioning the poor patient compliance in a uh, post-operative setting, I think there is a reason to explore uh, uh, a focus on pre-operative regimens, and these are being uh, evaluated in, um, uh, in terms of type 3 G-junction tumors um, uh, as part of clinical trials, the neo agis trial, the Top Gear, and uh, the Critics 2 trial. I'd like to thank you for your attention.